Hello everybody. Just wanted to welcome you to uh, my second take, or my second attempt at the final tour of Little Blue 2. Uh, 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan Stealth Camper that I have lived in full time for the past eight, maybe nine months. Um, the vehicle build is actually about, about a year, maybe a little over a year. Um, initially Little Blue 2 was designed as a leisure vehicle for myself and my um, then girlfriend to take some um, weekend or maybe even a week-long trip so she wasn't designed as a full-time vehicle but then due to circumstances my girlfriend and I broke up and I ended up becoming pretty much homeless and having to live in the van full-time if you've been watching the series from the beginning you, you know or following the vlog then you you saw when that actually happened and then you know everything that resulted in the situation to where we are right now but we're gonna go ahead and continue our tour right now because that's what you came here for right not to hear about my personal <laughs> issues um, the van is pretty much stock and standard except for the interior um, has only slight modifications we've got a little velcro suction cup thingy with a velcro tip here this is so I can mount the dash cam I'm pretty cheap, okay, because I didn't have much money to start off with. So my dash cam is actually an Android phone, and um, it just has Velcro on the, the front side where the camera faces out, so I can stick it up there and I can use it as a dash cam. I can also flip this thing around and then use the other side so that it can point towards me as a talking head for those talking head episodes. In addition to the, the, the Velcro for the dash cam mount, I also mount the dash, I mean, uh, Velcro down here for me to put up additional phones here, one for GPS navigation and another one for music. I use um, cheap Android phones that you can pick up at Walmart um, or anywhere and I don't activate the service. I just use the phone as an internet access device or um, GPS device. On that, there really, th really hasn't been too much modifications up front. I did cut up a um, plastic bin here and screwed it in to use it as a shelf to hold things like plates and cups and whatnot. And I took the other half and I used it here to um, put like, uh, was it the uh, flavoring, season, seasonings and spices and stuff for cooking. Um, there is a switch here that you see that the household switch, which I'll talk about later, but this is part of the um, house battery system. And it's what allows me to flip, like when I flip this on, the um, house battery and the vehicle battery are connected so that my vehicle's alternator can charge both the house, I mean the vehicle battery, as well as the house battery system. We'll talk about that here later. The reason all this cooking stuff and, and plates and whatnot were up here, in addition to this um, container here, is that I did have and still do have an inverter cooking system here up front with the rice cooker that plugs in. My power system is back there, which I'll show you here next. And it's how I power everything, okay? This is the magic that causes or allows everything to happen. Uh, not my toothbrush, <laughs> but my inverter here. This is a 750 watt inverter. It is a, um, let me get it focused here. Schumacher, I guess, 750 watt inverter that has a power readout here. I'm not sure how much the charge is right now, but let me show you. We'll turn it on. It says low battery. So my house battery right now is extremely low. And the reason it may be extremely low is I have not been charging it up because I have not been um, driving the vehicle. And I don't know if I left it on or, or maybe the USB has been draining it. So I do need to drive the vehicle and switch the switch back on so that the system can charge up. The house battery itself is actually stored inside here. And um, I won't take it apart right now, but I'll do it on the, um, the series, you know, the little mini series that I'm going to do about um, how the system's actually put together. So stay tuned for that. But uh, just know that right now there's a small 35 amp hour AGM battery here that has a cable that runs to that switch that you saw on the driver's side door, the house switch, light switch. And then that cable actually runs underneath the hood here to connect to the battery system. And when I connect it, the, the systems are connected so both of them charge off the alternator when it's running. The vehicle itself, 
um, what makes it a house or a home is this back here you can see it does not look like a standard um, minivan it looks like a uh, bed and that's because it's configured as a bed right now I currently have um, I have the system set up right now so it's in um, permanent bed mode although this van let me show you the interior here for those of you who are curious you can see my um, curtains and stuff are actually pretty crappy and old because they came from several other van builds I did not buy new stuff and I have a little mini fan back there that's a 12 volt fan that can be used to hook up to a 12 volt power source so I can have a fan back there blowing I also have a fan up front here which I use. This is the main fan. This fan is hooked up to the house battery system. The fan in the back currently is not hooked up to any battery system. But when I do want to use it, I use a portable power pack like that boost unit right there that you see that um, NOCO sent for me to review. So I'll be using that as an external power pack to power that um, fan and I have used it and so it allows me to run two fans if I really wanted to I could run another 12 volt source back there and power that fan and this one off the house battery which I would do if, if I was you know doing a new van build and wanted two fans but truly I only really used one fan here to keep me um, cool during the um, summer months I did not start my vanning journey in little blue 2 until August of last year it was still hot. It may not be as hot as like June, July, but it was still hot. Temperatures were in the 90s and the vehicle could get up as high as over 100, okay? And um, we're going to do a, uh, another segment later on how to stay cool. Um, I don't know if it would actually keep you cool enough during um, June, July, but I know that in August, September, it was still hot as all heck in Florida. And I did survive it um, using the system that I'll be describing. Um, if you've been following the series, you know that we tried everything from building those homemade air conditioning units and whatnot. But you can see they don't exist right now. I ended up getting rid of them. And I'll talk about that in that segment, which I'll do on a revised segment on how to stay cool living in a van in a place like Florida. If you look carefully at the bed system, you'll see that it is actually um, still built upon the regular seat. So I have the, um, the standard middle bench seat here as the base of the bed and then what I did was you can see I put a piece of board here in the backing because the the original backing here crushed it was one of those little um, pegboard like things and it crushed so I put a board here to make it stronger and I have a board there which I'll decompose later when when we do the dissecting little blue video segments but this is the standard mode there's room here for um, one adult to sleep extremely comfortably two adults that they're not too big and sleep in here as well and I also have the drawer units back here which can be used to store anything from clothing to whatever supplies you want there is a side unit here that I use uh, as a um, medicine cabinet so it's got my medicines and whatnot I did buy a temperature and clock you know gauge thingy here and calendar for like a dollar from um, Goodwill that I use and it helps me to tell the temperature. Right now, you can see the temperature says 88 degrees, which is fairly um, hot, um, but bearable, especially since where we're parked. I don't know if you can still hear the wind blowing. And the reason I'm filming in here is because of that wind noise. Um, when I go out, it might block my ability to talk. But I have mounted a um, curtain rod up across here. And the curtain rod, you can see here, I don't know if you can see here, is a standard curtain rod from Walmart. Like, I think you pay roughly two bucks, maybe three dollars for one of those curtain rods. You can see that it changes color here, and the reason it did that was this is a repair. They do break if you keep hitting the curtains and bending it and breaking it. But I take the curtain, or I took the curtain, and I flattened it with a hammer, and then I just simply screwed it into the plastic. And then I use the um, curtains themselves. These are, um, I think they're called thermal block curtains from Walmart there um, I buy like the long ones I think they're like 86 inches or so and then I cut them in half or to size so one sheet see they have these little pre-made pre-made pockets that you can slide stuff on see how it slides there with the pockets there's one on the top and one on the bottom so one sheet of curtain can actually be turned into two sheets of curtains for the man 
And I basically chose the color black because I wanted people to see blacked out. Like when I close this, inside it's nice and bright. But people looking at the vehicle from the outside, it just looks like black. You know, like they can't tell unless they look up close that it really is a curtain. Um, I also have curtains on the sides here, including the side doors, which I'll give a tour here in a moment. But as far as I can think of, that's pretty much all that's unique in here, other than these um, pop lights here. These um, are battery operated. I don't know if you can see it came on there, but I'm gonna, it's on, and now it's off. So those were mounted with um, Velcro. I put Velcro on the roofing. Such a dirty roof, right? Because this is kind of a junky vehicle. <laughs> I only paid like eight or nine hundred dollars for little blue too, which for some of you, you understand now why I don't want to sink, you know, money into fixing blue up. I've already sunk, what, over four hundred and fifty dollars, and the result was nothing. Um, just threw away four hundred and fifty dollars. I don't feel like sticking any more into this vehicle. Um, she's got, I think, more than three hundred and thirty thousand miles on her. Um, I put on more than twenty thousand miles in one year from traveling around the state. So, she's at the end of her life as a camper, and I'm planning on keeping her intact here while we finish up the series for um, the yurt being built at Camp Freedom 2 and the new Camp Freedom Trail. So stay tuned for those video segments, um, and also the decomposition of um, Little Blue 2. Oh, some other stuff that I wanted to point out that I think are important and worth noting. This here, what you see here, is a carbon monoxide um, detector. And this is really very important um, to have if you're a vehicle dweller because carbon monoxide is very deadly. You, um, it can kill you while you're sleeping or just sitting in your vehicle. So I recommend that you get one of these devices for your vehicle if you're planning on living in it and mount it at roughly where your head level is. Um, like when you're laying down, if you know, you might be saying, well, I'm not going to run my vehicle while I'm um, sleeping, which is probably the smart thing to do. The problem is, if you're stealth camping in an urban environment and you're in a city, the car next to you might be sitting there and they might be blowing exhaust right up into your vehicle. And, you know, vehicles aren't airtight, so if exhaust is blowing all around you, it may seep up into your vehicle and get trapped in here and potentially kill you. So, this is important, and always check to make sure that it works. That's a test. It should go off again here. I'm deep here. So, that's how it works, and if, if you hear that, um, the first thing you need to do is open up, open up all your windows and doors and stuff and let it air out, because you've got enough carbon monoxide that the unit is um, detecting it. Uh, my personal experience is it never went off on me, thankfully, but it could. Um, you can see here I have supplies. I also, I install like these little hooks right here where I can hang things all over the vehicle. So this just has a little disc container, flashlight. I put some up there where I have a back scratcher. And over here you can see I have my little um, knapsack here, day sack, as well as other flashlights and other tools and whatnot. So these little hooks are pretty useful. And all I did was just screwed it straight in, okay? <clears throat> This vehicle itself, like I said, has a, a bench seat, which if you did not have to have your van function as a soccer mom van where it had to carry passengers, you probably don't need to keep the bench seats. And you could build a custom bottom here or a custom area and make the, the van a true RV type vehicle. I had to keep the seat. And the reason I had to keep the seat is, you know, for those who have been watching me, I have visitation with my children and they're the reason I'm still here in Florida and haven't just taken off and gotten a better job in Thailand or some other country where I could go back and resume teaching, okay? I stayed um, in Florida so that I would not be away from my kids and, you know, even though it makes things really difficult, they are my number one priority and I cannot just abandon them. I cannot just leave them. And, you know, if you've been following the series, you've seen the hardships uh, that have resulted at least parts of it um, over this past year, but it's an ongoing thing that's been going on for um, seven years. On April 10th, it'll be pretty much exactly seven years since this whole crisis started with my life. But anyhow, um, the reason the seat is left intact is I can fold all this unit up here and have the seat flip back up, and this van then has the capacity to carry um, 
one, two, three, possibly four passengers in addition to the driver. So they can carry four or five people legally and comfortably. There are seat belts here for everybody. See, the seat belts are still left intact. I did not remove them. Um, what else? There is a water sprayer here. Let me show you how that works. Spray water. And that's important um, for cooling and stuff for the summer months. And I'll talk about that in a how to stay cool segment that's, that I'll be doing here shortly. A real one that, that isn't just theories, but actually works. <laughs> it's how I survived uh, living in the van all this time. Let's take a look towards the back now. Oh, wait. I Ignore that mess right there. That's stuff I'm cleaning up. I did want to point out this. This is a water system that's used for a, a simple sink system. And what it is is just a laundry detergent holder thing that has been rinsed out. And you can see this is all broken and stuff because it has been used. But you push on this and water comes out. See that? So you can wash your hand, you can wash your dishes, whatever you need to. And just refill water as you need to. I think this thing holds about a, a gallon and a half. It holds 150 fluid ounces, so it's 1.17 gallons. And I also have a little tiny um, unit here for storing junk. This is so dirty. Look at that, all that sand and crap. But I put junk there. I um, also have some uh, vehicle type stuff there. You can see that almost everywhere I have drawers, I have these hooks units. These are, um, vel not vel what are they called? Bungee cords. I think I got these from the either from the Dollar Tree or from um, the flea market and you can get you know the nicer ones from Walmart or some other stores and like even those drawer units there I put little holes to it and put the bungee across and the reason those bungee cords are so important is um, when you're driving around those drawers will fly out and all your stuff will fly everywhere if you don't have that the other thing you'll notice throughout the van is like velcro everywhere and that's important and significant for a reason. I don't even see my drawer there. It's got a little cloth sticking out. But uh, let me go ahead and um, set up the rear so that you can get a tour. Right now it's empty. You see that little desk area? That was an add-on that occurred later so I could work from within the vehicle. And it was designed specifically for my laptop so I could mount it up there. Um, I actually have not a full-size laptop but a mini notebook. So I can mount it up there and use it for watching movies. Or I could work from inside the van itself. But I'm going to show you um, the back here in a moment and show you how we can actually... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm talking so far away from the microphone, I don't think you could hear me that well. But I'm going to show you here in a moment how um, that desk area can be used inside or outside. Right now, you can see that um, it's cleared so that we can see out the rear of the vehicle. But I can mount my mini notebook there and use it as a TV and just lay here and chill and watch movies. Isn't that great? Really comfortable. And I have a little fan blowing right at me to keep me cool. And that's pretty much how I function. So let me go ahead and uh, give you a tour of the back. But I'm going to go ahead and set up the laptop display to show you how it can be used as an office area in the back. 